This is Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. And it's going to be on the church in Thyatira. And the title is going to be Flaming Eyes That See All. In Revelation 2, 18 through 29, it gives us a description of the church in Thyatira. And remember that these churches have more than one application. It was a church when John was here. And it will also be a church in the time of Jacob's trouble. Each church also represents a certain time in church history. We as Christians can also get spiritual application for us today, but the doctrine is primarily for those in the tribulation, time of Jacob's trouble time period. So Revelation 2.18 says, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. So the person talking is obviously Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God in the flesh, according to 1 Timothy 3.16. The verse said, His feet are like a fine brass. Revelation 1.15 says, His feet are like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. This is why the devil's counterfeit, Santa Claus, comes down a chimney, feet first, where there is fire. And then... Revelation 2.18 also says, Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire. And the comic books will copy this. And you can see hero, superhero characters and villains with flaming eyes or fire coming out of their eyeballs. Everything God has, the devil tries to counterfeit it. But the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ see all things. Second Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. And let's look at some things Jesus Christ sees with his eyes. First, he sees you doing God's service. Revelation 2.19 says, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Many people think they are doing God's service when they are actually doing the devil's service. John 16, 2 says, And they shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. The devil can deceive you into thinking you are doing something for God when you are doing something for the devil. He can deceive you into thinking you are doing the devil's service, his own service, when you are really doing God's service. But Jesus Christ sees our works, charity, and faith. And our service. The Lord Jesus Christ sees your service to God. And this is what you would be judged on at the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The service should be for God and not man or service for ourselves ephesians 6 7 says with good will doing service as to the lord and not to men if you have works then you are doing what you know to be right and abstaining from what you know to be wrong we don't do good works to get saved or stay saved as christians we do works because we love the lord jesus christ the saint in the time of jacob's trouble will have an element of works Involved in his salvation because he must abstain from taking the mark. And if abstaining something, abstaining from something isn't a work, then I don't know what is. Today I abstain from drinking alcohol. Is that a work or is it not a work? Abstaining from alcohol doesn't have anything to do with my salvation. Someone in the time of Jacob's trouble, if they take the mark, then they will automatically lose their salvation if they have it or not be able to get salvation. So abstaining from something has something to do with someone's salvation. And I don't see any way else around that without just denying what it says or making up excuses and saying that God won't let them get it or the Antichrist won't give it to them because he knows they're saved. So you have to give assumptions, change the text, or guess 
So I'm just going to believe what it says. But the uh, time of Jacob's trouble, saint, he also has to have the faith of Jesus Christ. And without the blood of Jesus Christ, he can't get to God. So that's no different there. But next we see the word charity. Charity for Christians is our love towards other Christians. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. 1 Corinthians 16.14 Let all your things be done with charity. Colossians 3.14 And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. God sees our love toward fellow Christians. He sees our charity. Revelation 2.19 says, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. And next he sees our faith. So he sees our service and he sees our faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Adam and Eve and Abel had faith in a bloody animal sacrifice. Noah had faith to build the ark. Abraham believed God about his seed. People under the law had faith. Christians have faith in the gospel today. And the tribulation saints will have faith in Jesus Christ. There has always been faith, and there has always been grace. And no one has ever got to the third heaven without the blood of Jesus Christ. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And He sees our faith. He sees what we do by faith. And not only this, He sees our patience. Tribulation saints are going to need a lot of patience. They're going to be patiently waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back and get them out of this world. They can't get impatient and begin to go along with the world system by worshiping the beast in his image. And their patience is connected with their the salvation of their souls. Luke 21, 19, In your patience possess ye your souls. As Christians in the age we are in now, we are patiently waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back and their rapture and to get a glorified body. Romans 8, 23 through 25 and says and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it and next we see that Jesus Christ's flaming eyes don't just see our patience and our works and our service and our faith. They also see the false teachers. Revelation 2.20 says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to do my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Jesus Christ has a few things against them. So they are on a pretty good standing, but they have a few things wrong. They are suffering women to teach. So they are allowing women teachers. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.12 says, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Many times somebody will ask you, Why are you against women pastors? Why are you against women being in authority? Because... Paul says in 1 Timothy 2.12, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So I don't see why that's a problem. Uh, Jezebel was a wicked woman who was married to King Ahab in the Old Testament. She killed the prophets of God. She was very manipulative and seductive. And when Jehu came to kill her, she even put on makeup and fixed her hair to seduce him. So she gets what she wants by making men lust and by fornication. And when women are leaders or pastors, it leads to a very effeminate people who go more by their emotions and feelings than by what the Bible actually says. 
the charismatic movement would be considered very effeminate. They will choose emotions and personal experiences, and those things will override the words of God for them and their life. Isaiah 3.12 says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women are rule over them. O my people, that are they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. So he says, children are their oppressors, women rule over them, and these people are causing them to err. You see all of these women preachers, and they are all teaching false doctrines. And I have never heard of one that believes the King James Bible. Joyce Meyer and Paula White are very wick wicked women who are after your money. Notice in Revelation 2.20, Jezebel calleth herself a prophetess. So she calls herself that. She isn't called by God. They're self-proclaimed prophets and pastors and teachers. She is teaching false doctrines. She is teaching people in the church in Thyatira to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And the mega churches today do this very thing. They teach baby Christians to commit spiritual fornication by shacking up with the world and worshiping idols. They worship idols through music. When Lecrae and these other contemporary Christian artists perform, they are getting the worship, not Jesus Christ. Many times, Christians are embracing the contemporary music, and that is a step in the wrong direction. Contemporary music and the modern Bibles go hand in hand, and they produce worldly Christians. Also notice this Jezebel is a seductress. 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Mark 13.22 says, For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. The concept of this wicked woman seductress is in fictional stories like batman where you have the villain poison ivy who seduces men and causes them to lust after her uh, revelation 2 21 says and i gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not jesus christ wants her to repent he gives everyone a chance to repent even this wicked woman god wants every christian to repent of the sin in their life and for every lost person to repent in the sense of changing their mind about their self and the gospel. This Jezebel won't repent because she is a stubborn rebel. And 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of a witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he gives her some space. That's where you get that saying, give me some space. Revelation 2.22 says, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And this is where you can get the saying, you made your bed, and you can lie in it. If you stay in your sin, then you are making your own bed. He is going to cast those that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. And there is going to be great tribulation in the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew twenty four twenty one says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Revelation two twenty three, it says, And I will kill her children with death, and that all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. It seems that the Bible implies at times that there is an actual name or an actual being named death. And Revelation 6, 8 says, And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sit on him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Jesus Christ is the only one to defeat death. 
Jesus Christ has the keys of hell and of death. Jesus Christ is going to kill her children with death. This wicked world loves to kill innocent babies. It takes a wicked spirit in a woman to kill her own baby. God gives her according to her works by killing her children himself. Evil mostly produces evil, and by God killing her children, he is doing them all a favor. Paul has spiritual children, the ones who he led to the Lord Jesus Christ. So this could be the wicked woman's spiritual children who she led to Satan. Revelation 2.23 says, And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the range in hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. He searches the range in hearts because he is the only one who knows our hearts. Luke 5.22 says, But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Mark, Matthew 9, 4 says, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Psalm 7, 9, O oh, let the wickedness of this wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Revelation 2, 24, But I say unto you and unto the rest in Thyatira, As many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. So there are some people who haven't been deceived by the self-proclaimed prophetess. Some of them have not known the depths of Satan. Uh, this Jezebel prophetess, who could be the real Jezebel, or just some woman with the spirit of Jezebel, would also match the kind of woman in Proverbs 9. Proverbs 9.18 says, But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Notice it says her guests are in the depths of hell and the people in Thyatira who have the doctrine of De Jezebel know the depths of Satan. But next, Jesus Christ and his flaming eyes see us holding the good things that we have learned. Revelation 2.25 says, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. 2 Timothy 1.13 says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. The book of Hebrews has doctrine primarily for people in the time of Jacob's trouble. It says this about holding fast in Hebrews 3, 6. But Christ has a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, firm unto the end. Notice the command to hold on to something unto the end. Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Over and over you see the command to hold fast. Hold fast the things you have received and heard. Revelation 3.3 3, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So the command is given to the church to, or the church in Philadelphia, the command is given to them to hold fast so that no man take their crown. Revelation 3.11 says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And then born again believers today who are in the body of Christ need to Hold fast the things we have learned. We need to stay with the King James Bible and the things God revealed to Paul. We shouldn't let them slip. The people in the time of Jacob's trouble are going to have to hold fast the things they have heard and received. They can't compromise with the Antichrist because it will lead them to hell, according to Revelation 14. If this church holds on to the good things they are doing, then they are going to be rewarded power over the nations. Revelation 2.26 says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So not only Christians in the body of Christ get to rule with Jesus Christ, but also tribulation saints will, will rule with Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2.12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If, if we deny him, he also will deny us. 
we can deny him by our wicked works. Titus 1.16 says they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. If a Christian wants to rule with Jesus Christ, he is going to have to live faithful. He will never lose his salvation, but he can lose his reign with Jesus Christ in the kingdom. If the tribulation saint overcomes and stays faithful, then he will also reign with Jesus. Jesus Christ has the authority to give others power over the nations. Right now, God allows Satan to have power over the kingdoms and give power to whom he chooses. In Matthew chapter 4, he tried to bribe Jesus, telling him that he would give him the kingdoms of the world if he would fall down and worship him. Jesus declined because he knows everything is just going to be his anyway, one day. At the second advent, the kingdoms will become the Lord Jesus Christ and Satan will be bound. But now back to Revelation chapter 2, when we see verse 27 where Jesus says, And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father, and I will give him the morning star. And the morning star is Jesus Christ. As you can see, Revelation 22, 16 says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. If you use the modern versions, some of them call Satan the morning star in Isaiah 14. And that shows the spirit behind the new Bibles because Jesus is the morning star. Why would you give the name to Lucifer, Morning Star, when Jesus is called Morning Star in Revelation twenty two sixteen? And then Revelation two twenty nine says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It is unacceptable not to hear what Jesus says. We can know what he has to say simply by opening his Bible and listening to his preachers and teachers. There will come a time when there is a famine in the land of hearing the words of the Lord. Amos 8.11 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. But if you're not saved, the thing you should be worried about right now is not learning the book of Revelation. What you should be learning about is Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3, Paul gives you the gospel. He says, Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ lived a sinless life. He was a born of a virgin. And at the age of 33, he died on the cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. He became sin for us. The Bible says he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And we've all sinned. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus Christ hung on the cross, taking our place. He became the ultimate sacrifice payment for sin and if you will come to him as the guilty sinner that you are and will put your trust in what he did on the cross as your payment for your sin and believe on his name then you can be saved and have eternal life the bible says in acts sixteen thirty one, believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on Him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior.